God is so good. Amen. All the time. I want you to turn in your Bibles, if you have one with you, to Ephesians chapter 1. And while we're looking at that, I want to put in another word for our Wednesday night Bible study. Last week we studied in the fourth chapter of Matthew about the beginning of Christ's ministry. Repent. Or the end of time is near. You know that's the same message that John the Baptist preached. That's right. And that message hasn't changed, folks. Amen. God is calling for us to repent. Not only the lost people, but us that are children of God to repent of our sins. <clears throat> Just because you're saved don't mean you are free from sin. We are not. Neither can we be. As long as we are in the flesh, we are prone to sin. Now, if you're saved, you're two people. You're still a fleshly person. You still have desires of the flesh. But you're also a spiritual person. And that's the real you. That's the one that the, your soul has been quickened or made alive. Amen. If you're a Christian, your soul has been made alive. Yes. And one day we're going to get to maybe teach on that subject, a person's soul. A lot of people don't even realize what their soul is. But if you don't know God, your soul is not alive. It's wanting to be, it's squirming within you. Every time that the Holy Spirit is, deals with you, that soul is wanting to come alive. But so many times, I myself, in my younger days, said, no, I'm not ready for that yet. You know, you have control over your soul. Satan doesn't. God doesn't. He don't take control. He could, but he does not. That's free will, and that's another subject that we need to talk about one day. It's the free will of God and the free will of mankind. That's right. We do determine whether we're saved or not. God deals with us, but he don't force salvation that's on no right. one. But he does deal with us. Salvation is our choice. That's the free will choice that God made us. So we choose whether we're going to be saved. We choose whether we're going to let our soul come alive. We, we choose what we're going to do for God if we do anything and what we won't do. So we cannot accuse God when we stand before him in judgment, we can't say, God, I didn't know. That's right. We do know. And we do make the decision. And that's what our thoughts are going to be on this morning. The callings of God. It's a deep subject. There's no milk in it. It's all meat. So hang in there with us. Let the Holy Spirit, if He is in your heart, let Him deal with you today. And if He's not in your heart, this would be the perfect day to let Him in. Ephesians 1, we're going to start with verse 3.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is Paul talking. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He's talking to this church. He said God has blessed us. And I can say the same thing here. that Paul said God has blessed this church. And he is still blessing this church. And he's going to continue to bless this church as long as we're in his will. As long as we're seeking God in our lives. As long as we're effective witnesses for God. He is going to bless this church. Just as he did the church that Paul was in here. And this is the part I want us to get. Let's go over part of that again. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Now I want you to get this part here. God called you before he even created this world. He knew you. That's what Paul is saying here, he, and that's what we need to understand. God dealt with us even before we were born. God called you before you were even thought of, before he even created the world. Now that's something to think on. How did he know about us? He knows all things. He knew you were going to be born. He knows if you're going to accept him or not. And he has called you. Whether you're going to be saved or not. He said let all men come to me. Christ died for all. God so loved the world. That he wants all people to trust in his son. But they don't. Only a few people answers that call. That God has called. And the scripture is called a remnant. That means just a little bit. Compared to all civilization. Just a few are going to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> just a few. Just a remnant are going to be saved. But all are called. And it's up to us to answer that call with a yea or a nay. And we do. We either accept that call or we don't. That's the call for salvation. That's the call that the Holy Spirit gives you, deals with your heart from time to time. I know there's something I need to do. I need to, I need to be more effective in my life with God. I need God in my life. You can't deny that you have had that call. I did several times. But I wasn't ready. And I've witnessed to a lot of people, I'm not ready for that yet. I don't want that in my life. You see, they have made that decision. They have been called. The Holy Spirit is dealing with these folks. But they say, no. So they don't want that. But Christ does call people to salvation. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to all good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, now, God got great plans for everybody. But you have to answer the call. You have to accept Christ as your Savior for those plans to start. But does God does. Have, he's made plans for you. Way back there. 
and those that he has saved. He has plans for you. But there's some more callings that you have. God continually calls his people to a greater understanding, to a greater commitment, to a greater service. God calls his people on a regular basis to do this. He called me to be a teacher, not a preacher. He calls pastors to be pastors of the church. And there's a difference between pastors and preachers. They got all kinds of preachers. They got evangelists that goes around different churches to preach. They got missionary preachers that goes all over the world winning souls. They got pastors like Brother Bill. And we need to keep these people in our prayers. They are called. They are committed. And when God calls you, we need to answer with a positive answer. Yes. And we're going to see about a person that does this a little later. But there's, there's much reading in this scripture by Paul to this church. He's talking about the grace according to the riches of His grace, God's grace. His mercy and grace we could not do without. That's right. We cannot live without the grace of God, That's without right. the mercies of God. It would be impossible for us to do so. Wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will. God makes His mysteries known to His children. There are lots of things we said, well, I don't understand this, God. It's, well, if you don't understand it, it's a mystery. Okay. It's a mystery to you. There are those that do understand it. And God reveals his mysteries to those who seek his <laughs> word, to those who dig in his word, to those who read his word, to those who pray. Some people say, well, I go to church every Sunday. That's not it, folks. That's, right. That's good. And we should. But it goes deeper than that. Amen. You have to have a communication with God. You have to have a walk with God. If you're going to get anywhere as a Christian. God is calling workers to his field all the time. He said his fields are white to harvest over 2,000 years ago. Can you imagine how white to harvest they are now? Even more so. And he needs workers in this field. He needs you if you're a Christian. He needs you in his field as a witness. As someone that goes around and tells people what God has done for them and what he will do for them to get them excited in the Word of God, doing the will of God, that in the dispensation of fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. How can a person say you can't know if you're saved and read this and believe it? God says you can know. He said my children know me. And if we don't know God, if there's any doubt about salvation, there may be a reason. Maybe we are not saved, we just think we're saved. We just hope we're saved. I told you there's meat here. We need to know that we're saved. And if there's any doubt, we need to take care of that. We don't need to let it just go by and say, well, maybe tomorrow. Maybe next week, maybe next Sunday I'll, I'll do this. Next Sunday you won't do it either. If you don't won't do it now, you won't do it next Sunday or the next. We need 
to give our lives to God. We need to dedicate our lives to God. We need to have a fellowship with God on a daily basis. I was visiting my son-in-law here a few weeks ago. I usually get up early. I didn't even think he was up, didn't even know anybody was up. So I went to the living room and I was doing my daily Bible readings. And I was praying to God. And I was listening to God. And I closed my Bible then. He come over there, he said, I don't want to butt in, but are you talking to God? I said, yes. Was he talking to you? I said, yes. He said, how is that? He says, I know you can pray to God. And I know the Holy Spirit can deal with you. But you had a conversation. I said, yes. I do every day. Not just once today. I have a conversation with God all the time. That's how close you can get to God. We're the one that holds God back. We can get as close to God as we want to. God is always there. And you can have a communication with God anywhere, in the automobile, on the job. In your bed at night, when you get up in the morning. Anytime God is available. If you're His child... Now, if you're not, that's a different situation. You can only come to God when He, he calls. If you're lost, you can't just be saved any time that you want to. A lot of people say, well, I can't. No, you can't. You can be saved only when God's Holy Spirit is dealing with you. And that's the catch in it. I'll get saved when I get ready. No, you won't. You'll get saved when God calls. And you accept. That's when salvation will come, folks. It won't come just any time that we want it to happen. It don't work that way. I want you to turn, okay, with me over to... And this is another thing that we studied a lot about. The book of Isaiah... Seems like everything we come across in the book of Matthew, we, we find a lot of the answers in that, the book of Isaiah. Amen. Now, Isaiah was, two, was 700 years before Christ, which is about, what, a long time before us. <laughs> so, you see, Isaiah, it's good to read the book of Isaiah. The first half of Isaiah deals with Isaiah was the pro first called prophet. Probably the greatest if there could be a greater prophet than another. He was probably the greatest of all prophets. He was the first. And the first part of his the book of Isaiah deals with God's judgment on Judah and Israel. God's chosen people. The second part of Isaiah deals with God's goodness, God's forgiveness, and God's calling about Jesus Christ himself. How did he know 700 years before Christ that he was going to be crucified on the cross? They were going to gamble for his, his garments. To a T, he described the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. How did he know? Because he was a prophet of God and God revealed these things to Isaiah. Amen. But we're going to read just a little bit in, in this book. I don't know why I turned to Job. If I can, if I can find it here. I 
I know it's here. We're going to go to the sixth chapter of Isaiah. <clears throat> this is where God called Isaiah. He's the man called of God. He not only called him to salvation and saved him, but he called him to be a prophet. And he prophesied for quite a few years. But as he preached to the Jews, to God's chosen people, they didn't believe him. He told them many things that were going to happen. They didn't listen. And there are people preaching God's word today. And people don't listen. They don't heed. They're called, but they don't heed. They don't listen to the calling of God. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. Now this is Isaiah saying what he saw. And his train filled the temple, and above, above it stood the seraphims, which... Each had six wings. With twain he did cover his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy. Now these were the angels. The seraphims are angels. And that was their position. It's to be in the midst of God and saying, God is holy. God is holy. God is holy. He's seeing these things. He's hearing these things. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. This is God's making his presence known to Isaiah. God is, Isaiah is seeing. He's hearing these things. He's seeing these angels. And then he's seeing the movement that was being made there. Then said I, this is how he felt. And this is how we should feel when God is dealing with us. This is how we should feel. And I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell with the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, how did he feel? He felt humbled. He seen the mighty creator of all things standing there that had just called him. And he felt so little. He felt so humble. And that's why we feel when we approach the throne of God, we should feel humble and submissive right. toward God. We shouldn't say, oh, the man upstairs. And I've heard people say, oh, you know the man upstairs. Talking about God. How sinful and awful that is. To say God. Hey, he's just the man upstairs, that's all. There's no humility in that at all, is there? Not that I can see. That's boasting, that's pride. We don't need that in our lives at all. And I can see Isaiah here. As he says, because I, I, I see that I'm such a sinner because I see God, the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one flew, then flew one of the seraphims to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the thongs of his altar. And he said, laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, and mine iniquity is taken away, and that my sin is purged. He was saved at that moment right there. His sins were taken away. He was purged. 
He was brought into the presence of God. He was claimed. His name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, just as yours have, if you accepted Christ as your Savior. There's so much happens at the moment of salvation that we don't even understand. God gives you a new heart. He gives you a spirit that lives within you forever. 24-7. Once you're saved, that spirit is in there. That new heart is in there. And you say, you don't know? A person does know when this happens to them. You can't help but know. And that's one thing you are assured of, that you know you're saved because you have had this happen to you. Just as Isaiah did. He knew who he was. And he knew who God was. I knew who I was when I knelt before God and asked him to save me. I felt small like Isaiah did. Or nothing. That I needed God as my Lord and Savior. Before he dealt with me, I didn't feel that way. Therefore, I wasn't saved. When I got saved, I knew I was saved. No one had to tell me, but God, the Holy Spirit, told me I was saved Amen. and assured me that. And I have never forgot it. I have never doubted my salvation. It's there. It's too much you've gone by in my life with God. There's no doubt of my salvation. There was no doubt in Isaiah's also. Also, I heard a voice of loud saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? That's God talking. You know what Isaiah said? Hear my Lord, send me. Have you told that God to God when He has called you? That's the first thing I ask him, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? And I'm still asking him that. Every morning when I get up, I say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Amen. And we should. Our life needs to be dedicated to God. Amen. And if that is not your case, if you know God, if you're saved and you know you're saved, but you're not dedicated to God, you can renew that relationship with God. You can. You can come to God and ask Him for forgiveness right. of your walking away. He didn't walk away from you. And He will forgive you. And you can, again, have that relationship that you had when you were saved. Right. Thank you. So answer the call. Whatever it is, whether it's to salvation, whether it's to commitment, whether it's to service, whatever God has called you for. If it's a particular job that you know God wants you to do, He wants you to be a teacher, He wants you to be a witness, He wants you to be a missionary, answer that call. And God will call you as He calls you to be a Christian and you accept. He will call you to service. Again, it's up to you.